empowered people make informed decisions that lead to living a life without regret. This is Sarah Kaki and Shauna Woods from Atlanta Divorce Law Group, and this is the Happily Ever After Divorce Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Happily Ever After Divorce Podcast. Sarah Kaki here, and I am joined by our managing partner, Shauna Woods. Hey Shauna. Good morning. Okay, so today we wanted to discuss this talking to your children about world events, what's going on in the news, and the ups and downs of what is on the forefront of conversation out and about and really how much of that should we engage with our children right now we are in april of 2022 as this is being recorded and the relevant news today is somewhat the ukraine russia situation and i know that my children have asked questions to me about oh my gosh is there going to be world war three is america going to have a cyber security attack from russia And I'm talking about a nine-year-old and a six-year-old that go to elementary school are asking me these questions. So it made me think, not just with Ukraine and Russia, but throughout all the things that happened, um, whether it was COVID, um, whether it's stock markets crashing in 2008, how much do we share with our children? What do we share with our children, if at all, when the news really takes off? Uh, Shauna, what are your initial thoughts on this? You know, I I was very close with my daughter, obviously, growing up. It was just her and I. And so there's a lot of times where you have to kind of think, am I oversharing you know, right. with my child? But really, especially when they're as young as yours, you really want to have them lead the conversation, have them ask you the particular questions and not really go beyond their questions, right? Right. Because they're going to get an answer and then they're going to want to stop and kind of start thinking about it. And I was thinking of that, you've got two different age groups that are pretty significant. Mm -hmm. You've got a six-year-old where they're still trying to figure out the difference between fantasy and reality, Mm -hmm. right? You take them to Disneyland, they're like, Mickey's real, right? And they're super excited where that nine-year-old's like, I'm excited about Mickey. Yeah, I'll play along. I'll play along. (laughs) You know, and so the difference between explaining something to a nine-year-old and explaining something to a six-year-old can be really significant. For sure. Yeah. And so what I love what you're saying is that letting them ask their questions is letting them lead the dialogue through their curiosity. Because to your point, the six-year-old's question is going to be from her world as a six-year-old. Right. And the nine-year-old's question is going to be from his world as a nine-year-old. And sometimes you can have a joint conversation, but sometimes the things you can share with a nine-year-old, you may not be able to share with a six-year-old. Or the six-year-old just needs a few more things to just feel safe. And I think that's the biggest point, right? How, uh, to me, the, the my objective when I have these conversations is first make them feel safe. As adults, we need to feel that sometimes when we watch 60 Minutes or 2020 or any of this news, everything feels so unsafe. I come from a background where I've never lived, outside of living in America since 96, before that, I've never lived in a world where right around the corner or two countries to the side of you, there's not a war going on, whether that was in Europe or in the Middle East. So my comfort level with conflict going on in the world is a higher level, higher tolerance level than my children. When I was in first grade, war broke out in in Eastern Europe, in former Yugoslavia. And our teacher sat us down and made a circle and started ta- telling us about what's going on in Yugoslavia and told us that you know, this is going to, we're going to see probably more people coming here from that part of the world. And this is what they're going through and having us ask the questions and lead the conversation through our level of curiosity at the time. And I think she even let us feel the sadness about it. She didn't try to cover that up. She let us feel the worry about it. She didn't let us cover that up, but bringing some facts to it, bringing some information to it, giving us a background to it really did make us feel more safe. But I think the other important part is kids are much more mature to have these conversations than we give them credit to. I mean, I know you can speak to that because your daughter was sort of like your 
So uh, she, she, yeah, you, she, she was part of raising herself, right? Yeah, she absolutely was, and very much my old soul. I yeah, guess a lot of people will say when they have children like mine, and it really is. I always did start with, well, what do you think, mm-hmm. right? Let me understand where you're coming from and what you're asking, because you hit on it. What are their fears or what is it they're trying to get at? Why is it they want to know this information? Is it because it's so prevalent out there and they're asking you, Mm -hmm. you know, for direction? Or is it, I have a fear, is this going to happen here? Right. Right. And so you really have to get at what is it they're going for? And then there does come a time I really do think that it's time to turn off the news. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and I think it's time to say, okay, we've heard enough about this today and we're going to go and do something that's going to be a little lighthearted. Yeah. Right. And get them away from that fear and anxiety because we all do feel it. Right. Right. And if and we know if we're feeling it, they're feeling it. And so I think that's a big part of it is saying, yes, we acknowledge this is going on in this world. Here's how we address our fears. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not going to shy away from the fact that this is happening. But here's how we address our fears. And I know we're talking about, you know, war and and what's going on in the Ukraine right now. But, you know, when children talk about world events, we're talking about things that go on here, too. Right. School shootings. Right. Mm -hmm. Which are obviously more prevalent in the United States. They want to know how are we addressing it? What's what's their mean? Like, how how does this affect me? Right. Because children really are very Mm self-focused as they should be because they're learning how to navigate the world with everything that's going on. And protect themselves. And protect themselves. Exactly. It's it's actually really interesting you say things that are even happening here because this happened to us also in the summer of 2020 when we had the Black Lives Movement. And there was so much on the news about that. And um, I felt that, okay. Kids need to have that conversation. And I even spoke to somebody that was a a specialist in speaking to children about racism. So I was like, how do I explain to my children racism, right? And especially a six and nine year old, just so concerned that if they did not think anything of their friend that's black or Mm -hmm. their friend that's of Asian descent, they didn't think anything of it. I wanted to be so careful to engage the dialogue in a way that they could become aware that there is such a thing as racism and this thing does exist and we need to be aware of it. But how do I not harm your beautiful mind that is not seeing understanding why should there even be a difference, right? Without harming that innocence. But they're going to, I think the key to this is you want to drive this narrative. What I don't want to happen is my child, and this did already happen to me, my child coming home and being so scared that World War III is going to happen. Or my child coming home and because he does look, bi- my oldest child does look biracial, I don't want him to come home and hear something ugly be said to him and him not even not even understanding how to compartmentalize that. And I'm lucky if they'll bring it up to me, right? That's the point that I think we need to realize is that we are lucky. By the time he's come to me and said, World War Three has happened. I'm lucky I'm even hearing this because so much of these fears or so much of these interactions as parents, we may never even hear about them. They may happen in school and the child just internalizes that. I did a lot of that myself growing up, looking and feeling different. My parents never heard about that. I never shared with them those feelings or those concerns or that the anxiety of being so different. So if when I catch my children say something and my advice is and this is limited to my experience is jump on that, jump on that and do something with it. Absolutely. And one of the, I think the easiest way I always found was car rides. Right? Yes. <laughs> car rides are a great way to have conversations because you have this, this space, it's a captured space and you're fortunate because you have the children that you know, are probably talking to each other right. and you can pick up on, Hey, what was that that you just said? Right. Let me bounce into this conversation. You're absolutely right. By the time it gets to us, they've been contemplating mm-hmm. this a while. They've been thinking about this a while and it's really important that we don't um, light fuel to a fire and, and, you know, add fear to them. Right. But we address it in a very, well, yes, this is how it happens. What are your thoughts about it? What are your fears about it? 
then let's go from there. Right. And I think as the kids, you know, because obviously my 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 daughter's grown now. So I've had kind of the how do I talk to her, you know, when she's young. And then as she got older into teenagehood, obviously these conversations changed, right? right. As she matured. But I think it's really important because in our society today, we all have access to instant news on our phones mm-hmm. constantly. And kids get phones pretty easy and early, right? 10, 11 year olds now, you know, are getting iPhones. I think it's important to talk to them about when you read something, do you see this as how they're inflaming it so you are fearful? Mm-hmm. Let's talk about what the reality is versus how it's presented to you. Right. Right. And I think it's really important, not not necessarily that they shy away from what those things are saying, but they have the tools to analyze, is this real or is this not real? And I think that, the again, the important, important part of having them drive this conversation is what you said earlier of not letting them get unnecessary fear because if we are the ones driving the conversation Mm -hmm. and we are the ones that's just projecting what we believe onto them, we could be creating some, basically transferring our own fear over to them. Oh, absolutely. And I think when you, we ask them questions, how do you, what do you think about this? How do you feel about this? What do you, you know, what do you think would be a proper response to this? Not only are we tapping into their imagination, but asking them to do some critical thinking. But I think if we really, really listen, we can engage our child's maturity level to hear more and learn more and to study it a little bit more. And I've, my son, my nine year old has challenged me multiple times where I'm like, okay, he's actually way ahead on this than I thought. He's much more advanced on this than I thought he is. And I'm keeping this conversation way below his grade and he's going to go get that knowledge elsewhere i'm not if i'm not satisfying that thirst and if i'm not capable to do that then i need to work with him and together we need to go get these answers you just brought up something that i think is so important as a parent yeah. and overall in general being able to say i don't know the answer yes. to that question yes right let's go figure that out let's go find out what we can do to figure out what the answer to your question is I, you're absolutely because I think that humility is so important for development. For I mean, we all want our children to be some sort of leaders in in their environment, right? We don't want a situation where your child is a follower to everything, right? It's important to be able to support and follow others, but to be able to lead your own mind of where do I follow, where do I lead? And I think what you're saying is exactly that that humility of I actually don't have the answer is a first step in knowing, okay, this is where I can go and discover more. And I don't have to have all the answers. I don't have to fake it till I make it. I think that's an important leadership lesson for our children to be able to lead their own minds. I also think that giving your children a healthy doubt over everything they hear Uh around them is so important. The teachers are put on a pedestal. Anything coming from an adult is put on a pedestal. And giving them some healthy doubt to say, everybody's giving, like sort of what you said, what you're reading in the news that's inflamed, everybody's giving you information from their perspective. You know, your teachers are coming from a place of wanting to teach you. Adults are coming, most adults are coming from a place of wanting to help you grow. But you need to learn to ask questions, like to your point, and not everybody has the answers. Your teacher doesn't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. All the adults around you don't have the answers. For me growing up, one of the most important lessons that I think has given me a lot of resilience today, and I see that in you as well, Shauna, with your with your personal story, is learning to live with the knowledge that things around me aren't always going to be this way, that things are constantly changing around me, that there is not thousand percent guarantee of safety and security in everything around us, yeah, right? The absolutely. world is a changing, evolving place, and yet still feel safe within. Yeah, I think you have to learn to live with exactly what you're saying, is there's a little bit of fear out there. Yeah. But with that learning to live with the fear, also learns to live with, and how do I protect myself? Yes. As much as I possibly can. Yes. Right? And 
I love the idea of admitting the adults don't always have the answers, mm-hmm. right? There's not going to be a concrete answer to every single question. And sometimes that's really scary for a child, right? Because they want that surety. And it is about the maturity and at what level do you start letting them in on the secret, yes. right? That we don't know everything. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, and I telling our children that there's everything's going to be the same, everything's always going to be okay, it's not always the healthiest way to go, right? It's not realistic. And it's not realistic. And I think these conversations are similar to conversations parents are having when they're getting divorced. Absolutely. I am the adult. I am, You don't need to do the worrying with me. It is my job to make sure we are good and that we're taken care of. I don't have all the answers right now. I don't, things will not always be the same. And that's the reality of whether your parents are getting divorced or not. Right. Things are just not, that's the reality of life. But you need to know that you're going to be okay, and I love you, and we're going to get through this together. And that's the same conversation that, hey, there's mom, I'm worried about this war in Ukraine. Mom, I'm worried about the COVID. Mom, I'm worried about what's going on in the economy. Depending on what the child is asking, it's that same concept of we do live in the unknown. It's just that wartime or when pandemic hits or, you know, markets crash, it becomes very real that we live in the unknown. But on a day-to-day basis, when these things aren't happening, they're not in the forefront of the news, we forget about the fact that we're living in the unknown. Whether you're children of divorce or not, you're still living in the unknown. No single moment, no single thing is guaranteed to you. I think it's the more we can teach our children to be happy, healthy-minded, feel secure from within, confident within, the more they can get comfortable with the unknown. And that's what is so difficult about adults who are going through divorce is not the fact that they've never faced the unknown before divorce. It's just now it's like on the forefront, the unknown. That is all that's going on in their lives. And if they weren't given this tool from childhood of, hey, I know that everything's unknown. I'm learning to get comfortable with the uncomfortable this divorce process becomes even more difficult. The self-reliance. Yes. Right? That's what we're talking about is the self-reliance. And it's one of the reasons we encourage so many people who are going through the divorce to get therapy on their own. Yeah. And then they're able to process their own emotions, their own fear factors, right? Their own, oh gosh, this wasn't what I planned for. Right. And then once they've learned to process this, then they're able to help their children a whole lot better process this. Okay, so life is changing right now, guys. We're still all going to be okay. Life just happened to change, right? right? And life does change. It is not a constant. It's very, very rare that anybody gets the same thing. This isn't um, Groundhog Day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're not going to relive the same day over. And nor would we want to because mm-hmm. life is about change and life is about challenges. And that's one of the, the actually beautiful parts of life is that you do have these things that you overcome. Yeah. And once you overcome them, you're like, I lived through that. I can do almost anything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's inhibitive of their growth. Yes. We don't talk to them about it. Is there a point of oversharing where we're giving them the details or information that could make them feel unnecessary things because they can't compartmentalize it? They can't understand it for sure. Um, but to, to Shauna's point, if you let, if you lead the dialogue with their questions, you can keep it at their capacity level and their maturity level. Absolutely. Sean, is there anything else you think we should share? I think we covered it pretty well, Sarah. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Happily Ever After Divorce Podcast. If you'd like to learn more, go to atlantadivorcelawgroup.com forward slash resources.